friends! Today we are using sublimation to make garden flags. Those cute little garden flags that you see, you know, out by people's front doors or by their mailbox. We are going to make some of those. Actually, we're going to make multiples of those and I'm going to show you how to do it from start to finish. If you are new here, my name is Kim Byers and I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos. Okay, so let's hop over to the computer. I'll show you what all we're doing and then we will print these out and we'll hit the craft table and put them all together. Let's go! Okay, so here we are on canva.com. This is a free website that will allow you to design anything. And I'm gonna show you how to bring in your own designs and set this up for sublimation. And I'm even gonna show you how to use some of the designs within Canva. Now, the, a lot of the designs within Canva that I'm using um, are that paid version, but again, you can do this for free as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to custom size and my flags are 12 inches by 18 inches and the reason that I want to set up this template is because I want to make sure that the designs that I'm pulling onto it which I'm going to print in pieces um, will all fit and kind of I want to get a good visual of what it's going to look like so if you have um, now your 12 by 18 inch piece of el you know or element you can go into uploads and so if you buy a design on Etsy design bundles or just find something free on the internet that you want to use you can upload that image right here and so it will just find it on your computer so download it to your computer and then hit upload and it'll ask you you know to search any of these things so you can get it straight from Dropbox from your device your computer Facebook Google Drive Instagram Okay, so I have already uploaded mine. So I have this one, and then I have this one. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna then take that design and I am just going to, um, you know, put it wherever I want it to be. So I am actually going to use the rotation right here and I'm actually going to have it come a little bit off of the piece. Now when I print it, I'm gonna print, I don't have the ability to print 12 by 18, so I'm gonna print each one of these individually, but what I wanna do is show you how you can set up your garden flag. So this, I know I kind of want it to bleed off the end or the top of the garden flag, and then this one I kind of want to be more centered, so I might make that a little bit bigger. And see, when I'm dragging it, you can see on the right how big it is. So 9.7 by 9.7. Well, I needed it to be an 8.5 by 11 sheet. Um, and the thing is, is if you notice though, this is counting all of this extra white space. So you can hit crop, and pull that down so you can get a real idea of how large that B is. So you can maximize your space. Okay, so now when I grab the edges, so see now I'm at 7.6 by 10. So that's gonna fit on my sheet. So I probably won't go any larger than that. But see how beautiful that is? This is gonna be really pretty. And so this is gonna be my spring version. So I'm gonna just gonna and I'm gonna hand place these, but I again, I'm using this to get my visual to make sure that I'm not making anything too large for my sheet. If I kind of grab at the edge of those flowers, see, I can tell now again that I'm kind of getting too big, so I'm going to have to make it less than eight and a half. Okay, so that works. Now what you can also do is you can go over into text, and I am going to um, literally just add some text. And so this font looks, you know, like it'll work. So it's kind of like the B itself. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to change that to say Byers family. And then you can just grab it at the edge. Um, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Let's say 60. And then I'm going to take that and put it down here. Now I am going to reduce that white space, okay, and then I'm going to center it. The nice thing about Canva is you are going to be able to make sure that you've centered everything and kind of really know what it's going to look like. Let's go up and just duplicate this. So if you go into the little dots right here, you can duplicate that. And so then I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, so maybe 40, and I want that to say the year that my husband and I were married. So we're going to say established 1996. 
And so then I can make that centered as well. So I want to take each one of these elements and then I'm going to print them onto the sublimation paper. So now that I know that this B is the right size and I know that my flowers are the right size and then I know that these two elements are the correct size, I'm going to, I'm going to open up a second window and go back to Canva and then I'm going to do another custom size, an eight and a half by 11, okay? So now this is my printable sheet. When I switch back over, what we wanna do is we want to grab an element, so we'll grab the B, and you just want to copy and paste that over into the next sheet. So I'm just gonna use Command C on my Mac, and then I'm gonna switch over to the eight and a half by 11 and paste it. And then I'm just going to center it, you know, just to make sure that I have plenty of white space border all the way around. And so the next thing you can do is then add a page, okay, and then go back to that design. And we want to take that flower, we're going to copy, and then we're going to paste it. And so this is the same, this is the exact size that we need. And so then we'll go back to that design one more time and we will get our lettering. So I'm just using the shift key to grab both of those and the copy command and then pasting it here. And so then I'm just gonna move it down. And so this means that I can print this design on just two sheets. And we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of more garden flags and then we'll print them all at one time on the home page. And so we're gonna go into my designs and I just wanna show you. So I we together created the B monogram for spring. And then I had also done one for winter. Um, and I had done one for fall and one for summer. So let me just show you, so for instance, the fall. This is the same process that we just did for the spring flag, but this time I just did happy fall, y'all, and I brought in, these are elements that are available in Canva under, literally under the word elements. So I just went into elements and I, I searched for um, watercolor pumpkins. And so all these different images show up. Now you can see that some are pro, which is the paid version, and some are free. Actually, all of these are pro, probably because, well, there's a free one, um, because I search for watercolor, um, and so that's probably why. There's a lot of different free images, though, that you can use. See, this one's free, like if you wanted that to be a little, you know, border up at the top, this one's free. The other thing that is super cool, so when you go into text, and it gives you some ideas of different texts that you can use and then you bring that in and then just change it to whatever you want it to be. Or you can um, you know, go into text this way and pick all different kinds of fonts. And you just have to tell them if you want it to be cursive or calligraphy or if you want it to be block font or whatever the case is. The other thing that's really neat is so say um, you've gotten this text and you go into colors when you've chosen these leaves or these pumpkins, Canva is actually going to tell you what colors are being used in those elements so you can match your font. It is so nice. And so I was able to you know, go in for Happy Fall and just choose the blue that's in that pumpkin, which I just think is beautiful. Or you could you know, change it to any of the colors in that scheme. See how cool that is? And so I'm gonna go with this kind of lighter pale blue, um, and then I'm using the orange for y'all. But isn't that fun? And it's so quick, and it's so simple. So then we'll do the same thing with this that we did with the last one. And so we will you know, grab each one of these using the Shift key and be able to pull those in. So I'm just gonna copy those, and then I can go back to that other element and this one is where I have the resized piece. So you could literally, if you're making multiple garden flags like I am, you could keep just adding pages, right? So you're downloading it all at one time and then you're printing it all at one time. So then I just hit the paste button and so then all these are actually fitting and I could literally grab all of them at one time again. So like if I'm worried this is gonna cut off and it probably will. And since I'm hand placing these after I print them, you can just you know move it around like that so you know it's on the printed piece. And then you go back to your other design, Happy Fall, 
and then we could grab Happy Fall, copy it. So let me just show you the other ones that I designed, same process, um, just because I want you to see them before I print them off. So I did one for Hello Summer, um, and so I got a watercolor, I kind of got a watercolor theme going on, a watercolor watermelon and then a little banner. I just kind of made a little uh, banner piece to go across the top. And then I also have, now this is this one I love, and this is a paid <laughs> design. The B is within um, Canva, but it's so cute. So they have the full um, alphabet and numbers, and each one has different, um, you know, forest woodland creatures, and isn't that sweet? So I just did Happy Winter, again, when I clicked on this, and then I, you know, did my text, I used the color version so it would tell me within this these were the colors that were already in my B and then I just said from the buyers family now that we have everything in our eight and a half by eleven sheets we need to flip all of those because whenever you do sublimation when you do um, iron-on when you do infusible ink all of those images are reversed and so what we need to do is you can click on those if they're an image and you hit flip and you flip it horizontally. Now if you scroll down and you have something with text in it, now unfortunately that's not going to flip. Uh, Canva just doesn't give you that option, but there is a way to fix that. So what we're gonna do is we will take this page because it has text on it, and we will download it by itself. So if we click on um, pages selected, we're gonna click off of everything. We'll click on this one. So then we're just going to download it as a PNG Go ahead and download that one. Once it downloads, what we're going to do is we're going to go over into images and we are going to bring it back up into Canva. Okay, so let's just pull it over. So see, this is our image. It has all of our text on it. And then we're just going to make sure I have it in my downloads, which is fine. I'm going to click off. And so then what we'll go over into elements, excuse me, into uploads, and we're going to upload that design. So if I go into my recents, I should be able to find that pretty quick, and there it is. So then what we just want to do is open that up as an image. So you see I've already done Hello Summer and Happy Winter. Um, and so once this comes in, we're literally going to insert it as an image over top of this one. Okay, so here it is. It comes in a little bit smaller, but we know it's an 8.5 by 11, right? So we just make it the size of the actual sheet then we can delete that original piece and now we have this image whoops I think I left one Eek. okay so now we have this image now because it's an image we have the flip option so we're just gonna flip that and so now we have that perfect mirror image so we'll do that to fall y'all and then um, all of these other images okay and I had already done that one so we'll just click on this one and we will flip it same here. And by the way, guys, I changed to lemons <laughs> as I was playing with it. Um, I really liked these lemon images. And so um, I switched my watermelons over to lemons. Okay, and then we'll flip that one. And then we're done. Now that we've saved each of those sheets, what we want to do is we want to open our design. Then you go up into print. You select print. It's going to bring up a dialog box and so we are using my Epson today so if you have you are wanting to create an Epson EcoTank sublimation printer I have a video I'm going to put up above for you so you can do that um, it's super simple and you will love creating so many things with this so for the sheets is what you want to do is we want to make sure that we're not doing default settings okay because you're not going to get the best quality of print your printer is going to try to save ink and we don't want that because we want it to really put all the ink onto the sheet so that we can sublimate that onto our garden flag. So what we want to do is we want to go in and I'm going to choose photo on matte paper. Okay, some dialog boxes will pop up and ask you if you want uh, best, you know, good, better, best. So if that is the case on yours, then choose best um, because again, it's going to do that photo type print. Okay, and so now we just double check it. We know that it's reversed. We have the best possible print quality and we have our correct printer. And now it's time to print. Okay, so let's go ahead and print all of these out and I'll meet you on the craft table.
So here we are on the craft table and these are the things that we're going to be using today. So I have my Easy Press 2, which is going to be my heat press for today. I have my heat resistant tape. I have my lint roller. I have a pair of scissors, a clear ruler. This is just regular card stock. And then I have my butcher paper and then these are my flags. So I got these on Amazon. I will put links up uh, or down below. So these were, came in a pack of four, very inexpensive. They are for sublimation. And then I also got the little flag holder that goes with it too. Okay, so let's move these out of the way and let's look at our printouts. This is a sublimation paper that I'm using and I'm going to link this down below with all the other supplies that we're using today. But basically we've printed them. Now we're going to take a pair of scissors and we're going to trim out, leaving a bleed, leaving an area all the way around, just getting off the excess so that we can then place it onto the flag and make sure that we have everything in the right place and use heat tape to tape it down because I want you to see this. So if I were to just do, the B is so big, maybe it's not a good example, but some of these smaller items, if I tried to just put it on the flag without trimming it out, it would be very difficult for me to center it because I have to flip it over and then I can't see my edges. So I like to trim out my designs, again, leaving an edge all the way around so I can use my heat tape. Okay, so let's go ahead and start trimming. And when you have text like this, you can also use a paper trimmer to just get close to that text. Again, we want to leave a little bit of a bleed. I'm going to give a little more space. And then you can trim that out quickly this way as well. The nice thing about this one is you can see that I'm not on any of my design because I can't see it in the small window is fantastic because I've cut things off before. Okay, and one more swipe. Okay, and so now we are ready to put together and heat press our very first flag. Okay, we start with protecting our mat and ironing. Basically, we're just going to use our easy press real quick to iron out any wrinkles in our flag. Grab those on top. Next, we're going to use our lint roller and get off any lint that might be on our flag. You always want to lint roll. Don't skip this because your ink will adhere to the lint and mess up your design. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to take our design and start placing it. I'm just going to flip this long ways so we know it's completely protected and covered. So now we'll take our design and place it. So we have this, we're going to actually have coming off the top of the flag. And then we have our large B for the center. And then we have this piece down at the bottom. So we want to only press what our, pre our, you know, what our heat press can cover or our easy press two can cover at one time. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I just want to spatially see how this is going to be. And then I'm going to take a couple of elements off. Okay, so that will work. And then we'll have our florals here at the top. Okay, so I'm going to take this off and this off. And we're just going to work with the B to begin with. And so you want to make sure that you have it straight for one thing. I'm not sure if you guys can see it on camera, but I can see through the paper. Okay, and so we're going to take a piece of heat tape. Put that down just to keep it from shifting. And then we'll measure to make sure that we're good on each side. Now that it's taped down, we want to cover it again with more parchment paper. I keep saying parchment paper, more butcher paper. Okay, and so then we'll take our Easy Press and cover the entire design. Start. Okay, so now we lift straight up. We're going to give it a second to cool. Now let's reveal. So we take off our butcher paper. Still really warm. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, look how beautiful that is. It turned out so great. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the other two elements and put those on. Oh, look how gorgeous that is. And there's still ink left on here, but they came off beautifully on this flag. Okay, so now let's go ahead and repeat that process and create our other three flags. we can go ahead and reveal and one other thing guys when you are using sublimation or infusible ink please 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 make sure that you crack a window turn on a ceiling fan do you see the ink that came through and got on that and some of that is just heating up of that uh, butcher paper but you can see that it's discolored so you make sure that you throw this away each time because if you don't like if you reuse this this ink summer would be on your next project so let's go ahead and throw that away Okay, and we'll take off oh wow that is bright that is so bright that is so cool okay and then we'll pull that off oh I'm so excited sublimation is just an amazing way to craft okay so we'll toss this and then we need to move on to our next element so I'm just going to move that down I cannot get over that is gorgeous every time I do one of these like the reveal part is like my absolute favorite okay so we're going to scoot this down and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take our lemons like our lemon tree that's hanging over and then we are going to kind of place it and it is going to hang off just slightly and you can trim that or just make sure that it's well protected for your mat um, you know that it bleeds off the side that it will go on to paper okay so let's I'm gonna shift it over just a little bit we'll use our heat tape tape it down again and this is how you use so much butcher paper guys because you do you have to throw it away every single time okay and we'll place that make sure that's nothing okay so now we are ready to cover with butcher paper and do round two And I can see now through the paper that that blue that was on the back side of that paper, I am praying that it did not go through to our design. But if it did, guys, this is a lesson to cut anything like that away um, if you can. And then if you can't, maybe reprinting it because obviously a little bit of blue got onto the back of my lemon sheet. You see it? And so it did transfer over into my butcher paper. Oh, here's hoping that it didn't go through to our front design. Okay, so we've moved all that out of the way. We're gonna give it a second to cool. And here's the moment of truth. Darn it, it did, it went through. Okay guys, lesson learned. Absolutely, make sure that you trim that out. Um, I left it on there thinking that it was okay on the back, but this heat is taking it right to the flag. Now, between you and I, I'm gonna put a little bleach on that, see if I can't get that off. I am not tossing this absolutely gorgeous flag, um, but isn't that sweet? It turned out so good. I am so excited to make the rest of these. Okay, and so now for our winter. is my favorite one yet look at that beautiful little fawn and we live in the woods guys so um, there are deer in our yard a lot um, is not this just beautiful I and this was 
well, I say free. It was part of my Canva. It was pro, but I didn't have to buy this design separately. Um, I mean, it was all part and parcel of my um, pro plan, which is, I think, $12 a month at Canva. It's so cute. Okay, so now we want to do is we want to put on the name. So we'll be able to flip that over and put that below. Um, and then once we're done with that, we're going to put on um, winter or happy winter. And as I flip that over, I notice that there's a little bit of ink. We're not gonna make the same mistake that we did with the summer. So I'm gonna take some scissors and trim that small piece out. Um, and guys, you know, I'm still learning as well. This is something that we just have to do. We have to check the front and back of the paper. I'm not quite sure where that ink came from, but it's definitely there and it will bleed through. and all the other things that we're um, doing around here. We celebrate a lot of um, things. <laughs> we celebrate a lot of birthdays. We celebrate um, just all the holidays of the year. So it'll be nice to be able to make my own flags and being able to just, you know, fly a monogram or a, a sign of some sort. Um, I want to be able to do all of those things. And that's why I love sublimation. And it is so super easy to do. So down in the description below, I put links to everything that we used here today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I want you to enjoy crafting. I want you to craft with confidence. And if you just have any questions about what we did or any of the products that I'm using, please ask away. Okay guys, I'll see you next time.